Hi, I'm Jan with Days for Girls, and in this video we're going to review how to make the shield in the Days for Girls system. Instruction document and patterns for making the Days for Girls shield is available from our website. The pattern is downloaded and printed as a half pattern. You need to print two copies of it and then cut it out and attach them right down the center line. On the pattern, it does give the dimensions for what the pattern should be at the start. So after you've made your full pattern, measure it top to bottom and side to side, and then compare it to the measurements on the pattern there. Uh, of course, we want to begin with the correct size pattern. On the pattern also is the finished dimension of the shield, and you want to take note of that so that you can compare your finished item to those sizes also at the very end. On my printout here, I've handwritten and in pink I show the grain line because we've had some questions about that. And the grain line is basically you're, you're setting the grain of your fabric, you know, right down the center line of the shield there. Okay, before we start actually sewing the shield, let's do a quick review of how the shield functions in the Days for Girls kit. I have two examples here. And the shield works with the liner. The shield has pockets and it has uh, wings, we call them, with snaps. And this snaps around the bottom of the panty. And then the flannel liner, which actually functions as the pad in the Days for Girls system, the flannel liner gets inserted into these pockets. The shield is designed with pockets large enough that two or three of these liners could be stacked up on days when there is a heavier flow. Here's another example of a shield and a liner that I have here. And there again, the same thing. It has the wings with the snap that snaps around the panty, and then it's worn this way. Now, uh, let's take a look, uh, a closer look at the shield itself. And the shield itself is made with two pieces of cotton fabric, a front and a uh, top and a bottom, you may say, and then two pockets, one on either end. And inside, in between these two layers of fabric, is the PUL, which is the uh, waterproof barrier. And we'll take a closer look at that in a minute. So now we have here, starting from the beginning, is we have our two pieces of cotton fabric which have been cut out very precisely. We now also have the, day, the die cutting system available for the Days for Girls shields and that's covered in other videos. Uh, but anyway, using the die cutting system we can get such a uh, precise cut on the shield. The more precisely the shield is cut, the more precisely we can sew it and that contributes to a nicer finished item. Okay, so back to our two pieces of cotton here that we start with, and because we're going to sew it with the right sides together, I position them that way. What we'll notice here on these two pieces, and I hope this shows up well in the video, this piece has a basting stitch here, which I did with a white thread. And this side has no basting stitch, so the key is that only one of the two pieces gets marked, and it's um, very helpful, of course, if it's marked on both sides of this one piece. That's why I like to use a long basting stitch. It's easy to pull out at the end of the sewing. It isn't going to disappear on me like a chalk mark or a disappearing ink pen might be. Um, and it'll be there even if I start this and I have to stop for a week or two when I come back to the project. My basting stitch will still be there. Then we also need two pockets. And uh, the, the uh, pocket pieces are typically done with a fold. And I have a demonstration here. Um, I like to cut the pockets basically in a five inch square, or I'm going to show you a strip method too. But um, I like to make them extra wide. This distance across here isn't quite five inches, but having the extra width on the pocket really helps when we get sewing. Um, then we take our square, fold it in half. As you can see, this one has been folded in half, if I can get these two pieces apart here. And um, then we've pressed it to get a nice crease on the edge, and then we do a stitch line across that 
fold there and that um, makes that fold edge a little bit more durable and stable and it prevents it from stretching out over time because the as we mentioned that the uh, shield has been designed so that we can fit extra liners into that pocket and this edge may stretch so that's the edge that gets the uh, stitch in it now here is a, a longer strip and you can make these strips as long as you want I start out with a five inch strip in whatever length I have and uh, fold it in half, press it, and then take it to the sewing machine and do that stitch all across. That's a little bit more efficient way than dealing with all smaller little pieces. But we make pockets a lot of times off of our scrap fabrics and so we're not, we don't always have pieces large enough to do a strip. Okay, we mentioned also in our shield that it has a waterproof barrier hidden inside these two pieces. And I have a sample here to show you uh, the, what the, the PUL, it's called PUL, which is polyurethane laminate fabric. It is washable, breathable, and non-toxic, so it's safe to use in our um, shield and in our Days for Girls menstruation system. If we look closely at the PUL itself, we'll see that one side is shiny and kind of slick, and the other side is duller and it's more of a knit material. The shiny side is in fact the waterproof side. As we're sewing, we want to be careful that we don't poke holes into our waterproof barrier. And we also want to make sure that the waterproof barrier is the side that's uh, facing the girl. In other words, the knit side would be on the bottom side and this would be on the top side uh, to function properly as the waterproof barrier that's in the shield. So in other words, here's the shiny side and here's the pockets even though we can't see it, I know that inside the shield, the shiny side's on this side and the knit side is on the bottom here on this side. Okay, so now let's start our steps for um, how to construct the shield. So we talked about the fact already, oh, and I'm also showing solids here uh, for video purposes. Uh, typically, we would use prints that disguise stains. And that information is in the document that you will get on the website that has all the sewing steps in it. But anyway, we start out with our two pieces of uh, cotton shield. We start out with our two pockets. And we start out with our PUL piece. And we layer them. At the sewing machine, we put the PUL piece on the bottom. And the shiny side is showing here. I don't know if that shows well in the video, but this is the shiny side. This is the dull side. So the shiny side is here. We put one of those cotton pieces on top of it. And uh, actually, I use them as a pair. I put them both in, and then I separate this and insert the pocket here. When we insert the pocket, we put the fold edge toward the center, meaning these two open ends here are, are at the end. And then, of course, this fold edge has been stitched. And likewise, we put a pocket in the other side. Now, um, one of our uh, cotton pieces has this stitch mark. And it's important that that stitch mark be showing on both sides and that only one of the two pieces has a stitch mark. We'll be talking more about that as we sew. And then I put these pieces together and I go to the sewing machine and I use a long basting stitch and baste it here and here. Now you may find it's helpful uh, to actually baste all four of these corners. It takes a little bit more time, but it does uh, prevent uh, things getting a little out of whack in the next step. So uh, you might want to give that a try if you're having trouble when you're sewing to keep all these layers together. Like I said before, we don't want to poke any holes into our a waterproof barrier so that's why we avoid using pins in the process and by doing a proper basting really the whole pinning thing becomes unnecessary because this all holds together very nicely even without pins. If you do use pins remember they must stay as close to the edge as possible and stay within that seam allowance and we're going to be doing a one quarter inch seam allowance which is not a very large space. So let's move on to step number three then. 
In step number three, we're going to be doing some sewing and we're going to sew our side seams. You'll notice that the ends here are not sewed. So the only thing we're going to sew in step number three is a one quarter inch seam right down this side and then likewise down this side. Uh, this is similar to driving a car. We don't want to push the gas pedal faster to go faster than what we can steer the car. And so in sewing these seams, we want to sew slowly enough so that we can steer around these corners and keep a nice one quarter inch seam. If you're not used to use doing one quarter inch seams, it might be helpful to have a ruler nearby and double check after you've uh, sewn one. Some of us sew this in what we call a scant one quarter inch seam, which means trying to stay slightly under a quarter inch so that if we do happen to waver out at any point, uh, we generally then don't end up going over one quarter inch. So that's some helpful tips there. So that's step number three. And you notice when we're sewing step number three, the stitch mark is visible and we have this uh, PUL side is on uh, face down on our sewing machine. And so we're not seeing the PUL side. If you sew with the PUL on the top side, the presser foot can sometimes push the PUL around and it makes things harder to sew. So I recommend that you keep that on the bottom and that when you see it on your sewing machine, you can see this uh, basting stitch. Well, let's move on to step number four. In step number four, we're going to trim the seam. So let's compare it to step number three. In step number three, we did a one quarter inch seam through here. And now we're going to cut off about half of it. And you can see here in step number four, uh, how we have our seam allowance has been trimmed to about half. You note that we are still not doing anything on the ends here. So that's all that is involved in step number four, is just carefully trimming around here. And if we trim in these corners very neat and tidy, it'll make it very easy when we do turning and we don't have to do any clipping. What some um, seamstresses are used to doing is clipping the curves. That's not necessary if we trim it neatly here. We also want to trim our corners neatly so that eventually when we turn this right side out, we won't have any troubles in the corners with too much extra bulk. Step number five then, uh, we're going to, now that we've done number four and we've trimmed, the next step is that we turn it right side out. And one of the quality points in step number five is after we turn it right side out, that we be sure that the pockets and our basting stitch mark are all on the same side. It is possible after we turn this right side out, if um, depending on how our fingers worked inside there to turn, that one of our pockets will be on one side and one on the other, or maybe both of them will be on the wrong side. That's easily fixed. Just go ahead and turn it back and the key is, is that in step number five, both pockets in the stitch mark are on the same side. And also in step number five, we want to look at our corners. Did we get those turned out very nicely? And is there a nice curve to those corners? We also take a quick press here, making sure that we've um, flattened this out as much as possible. And uh, yeah, just that we get those corners flattened out and turned properly. So then we can move, move on to step number six. In step number six, we're finally going to start working with the ends of our shield, the pocket ends. And uh, so the first thing that we do is we're going to stitch across here on a one quarter inch seam again. And you can go straight across if you're up for a little bit more of a challenge and you would like the shield to have a little bit of a rounded corner when you get all finished you can dip down at the corners here. That is a little more difficult though. Uh, so maybe you want to have a little experience before you try those. Um, after stitching that across in a one quarter inch seam, then on this end I show how I've trimmed it. And I don't trim too much right in this section because when we go to do our edge stitch at the end, 
um, when we come across here, if this is uh, too um, narrow in here, our presser foot might wobble a little bit going through there. So I tend to leave this a little bit longer, but the corners I try to trim precisely because that's where a lot of the bulk is. So after we do step number six where we've stitched and then trimmed, then the next thing is, is we all use the trimmed end. We're going to turn this right side out and then we'll see in the next step after turning that our pockets now end up on the side without that basting stitch mark. So let's move on to step number seven. In step number seven, now we've turned our pockets and um, we can see that our, uh, our basting stitch now is on the side, on the back side, which is where we intended it to end up in the, uh, from the very beginning. Anyway, here we are, our pockets are on the top side. There's no basting stitch here and we've turned our corners very neatly and we've given it a little bit of a press. That's step 7B is to just give it a little bit of a press and double check all these corners that they're fully turned before you press. Once you press, if they're pressed in wrong, you know how hard that is to, to undo it and make it work right. So then we can move on to step 7C, and in 7C we're going to go through and do the edge stitch as close as possible to the edge, going neatly all the way around the shield. I've also noted here some with a ballpoint pen where our snaps are going to be placed. That is the position for the center of the snap. Um, I have another example here of uh, 7C. This is a blue one and in this case I used a matching thread so it's not quite as easy to see the edge stitch going all the way around and we just confirm at this point that that basting stitch is on the back side. And at this point we can remove that basting stitch because we're all finished uh, with the shield and we don't need it there anymore. Now another helpful hint I would like to show is I take this to sew days and I also use this at my sewing machine when I'm making shields at home. What I've done is taken a shield pattern and marked a seam allowance on there. So I can, um, every now and then, I can take a shield that I've made, position it on here just to double check that my seam allowances um, are the right size and the finished shield is the right size. Now as I mentioned uh, way in the beginning, the pattern when you download it, it does have the finished measurements of the shield printed on there. You could also take out a ruler and you could measure uh, top to bottom and wing to wing to confirm that you're making the shield in the right size. So we, um, before we end our video here on making the Days for Girls shield, let's do a quick review of our quality points. Does it have a nice symmetrical shape and does it look nice? Is it the correct size overall? Is the pocket opening the correct size? I may not have mentioned that. In the document it tells what the measurement of this pocket width should be edge to edge here. Uh, and that is so that we have enough space to bulk up those additional liners as we need them. Has the fold edge of the pocket been stabilized with stitches? Stitches, are the pockets the correct size? Are the corners neat and tidy? Is the edge stitch close to the edge and neatly done? Are all seams properly secured? That is no fraying, uh, no little fraying points at the corners or in the wings or these corners or at the pocket edges there. Were the seams trimmed properly prior to uh, turning to eliminate bulk? Does the shield lay nice and flat without bubbling and skewing? Way back in step number three, when we stitched these seams, if the PUL layer got kind of um, off a little bit, that's going to tend to make the shield get bubbly in areas. So uh, that's we want to keep it as nice and flat as possible. Was the PUL put in properly? Was the shield made from the proper fabric? Are the colors and patterns of the fabric appropriate? And the answers to all those questions and the complete instructions, as we said, are available on the website. This has been a production of Days for Girls International. Thank you for watching, and happy sewing!